It's story time again, and here's a story written by Samuel Richardson, who lived from 1689 to 1761. It's not really a story, it's more of a, of a series of letters. He wrote a lot of letters, which were kind of like advice-type letters, and they were written for mostly for middle class, middle class people, um, tradesmen and merchants, professional class, about advice, advice on all kinds of different subjects, and how to respond in good, with good social practices to common everyday problems. So, Today, this is his letter 11 to a young man too soon keeping a horse. It's the father writing to his son. His son wants to, to buy a horse. And you can kind of think of that as, as a father writing to a, a son or a daughter today about about buying a, a car since the horse was transportation then and the car is now. And now our letter. Dear Tom, I always take great pleasure in hearing of your welfare and of everything that makes for your satisfaction and comfort. But give me leave to say that I am sorry to hear you have so early begun to keep a horse, especially as your business is altogether in your shop, and you have no end to serve in riding out, and are besides young and healthy, and so cannot require it as exercise. And is it worthwhile, think you, to keep a horse the whole week that you may have him at hand on a Sunday morning if the day proves fair and you have nothing to keep you in town? You must consider that though here in the country many common tradesmen keep horses, the expense is but too small, is but small to them, and the distance of one customer from another in a manner obliges them to it, but this can be no plea for you, and if you do not want a horse for exercise, you can only allege the worst reason in the world for your maintaining one, that your neighbors all around you do the same. For look who they are and what their motives, and you'll soon see the difference, and that their example will not justify you. Mr. Thompson, for instance, who lives next door to you, is near 60 years of age, of a pretty gross constitution, and capable of no other exercise, and moreover, he had acquired, by length of time and industry, an ample fortune before he gave himself this diversion. Mr. Jenkins has an estate fallen to him that sets him above the want of trade, and his continuing in it is rather an amusement rather than employment. Mr. Jackson, Mr. West, Mr. Trozier, and Mr. Kent are all men 
of established fortunes. And when you are as old as the youngest of them, and can as well afford it, it would be far, I would be far from dissuading you from keeping a horse. But at present, you may depend upon it. You rather incur their contempt than gain their esteem by offering to appear their equal when they and you well know in what relates to expenses you ought not to to be so nor have you had a time for it the lower part of the world may perhaps shew you more respect for those marks of substance but should a time come and who is exempt from misfortunes when they must know they were the effects of unthinking levity. How despicable must you then appear in their eyes. And let me tell you that the esteem of persons of credit and understanding must be gained by very different means. from shoe or equipage for with this with these modesty prudence and good sense only will ever prevail besides the expense of the horse is not the least thing to be considered it will in time very probably lead you to in a more dangerous one that of bestowing too much of your time in the use of it. It will unhinge your mind, as I may say, from business, and give your servants opportunity to be remiss in your absence. And as you are a young man, it is fit that you should lay up by your industry against a more advanced age, when the exercise a horse affords will seem not only more suitable, but perhaps absolutely necessary to your health, whereas now it may rather pass for wantonness and affectation. You are not without a tolerable share of reason let me prevail with you to use it. Sell your horse, and fear not being laughed at on that account, for it will be a credit to you more ways than one to say that your business would not allow you time to use it. And it would argue besides great perverseness to continue in an error for no other reason than to support a wrong judgment at first setting out, and you're reducing an un unnecessary expense in good time will more than recover any good opinion you may have lost by running into it. Your prudent use of this advice will, as it must tend to your good, be a great satisfaction to your tenderly affectionate father. By the way, I hope you will support the channel, and you can check the video description and see how to do that. And I invite your comment. This is a story really about trying to keep up with the Joneses. When you're young, you should work hard and, and don't try to, to follow the superficial opinions of other people and don't form your own. 
whether it's owning a house or a car or taking vacations or any particular expensive lifestyle, especially in these times, you must be very careful. There's more to be said, but I think I'll leave it at that. And this is Trip, and I hope you're all getting along very well. <laughs>